So, and also, say it was just a WordPress site, and it does, the site means nothing, but the employees have signed up for it. If you just get a password out of that, then you've got a password. They probably use the same password for their computer. Yeah. So you've got their password in their computer, and, you know, if it's a six-char password in, like, a minute. So and so then the entire network's vulnerable. And that's part of the whole point of, of this class is people use passwords all over the We use passwords all over the place. So if you crack it in one place... You can try it on one of the other systems that might be hashing it in a, a much more secure fashion, but still get in because you've cracked it via a different method. Exactly. The or heck? they may add one, two to the end or something like that. His computer fell asleep. Oh. Um, and so, yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, that's kind of the point of the expander because, you know, oh. for example, I'll use, um, Dan, everybody knows that Dan Kaminsky got hacked recently, and that's because... Oh, well, about a year ago. About a year ago. That's because every single one of his passwords was F-U-C-K whatever app it was. So, like, if it was MySQL, it was F-U-C-K MySQL. If it was Outlook, it was F-U-C-K Outlook. And if that's it was something else... My DNC password was in honor of Dan Kaminsky. <laughs> so, that was his pattern, and that's how he remembered his passwords, and that's how, you know, somebody figured out one, and he got hacked all over the place. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. Wow. Well. You got some more questions? If you're just doing like lowercase, like two lowercase on the left and uh -huh. two lowercase on the right, it's going to look for four it's four specifically four lowercase so passwords. Every password in my hash uh, file was three pass or only three letter passwords. You wouldn't get a single one. Exactly. Right. So, and here's something weird with Hashcat is it's built for complex scenarios that are longer in length. And so doing, for instance, two-character passwords only, it just doesn't. It, it'll crap out the IRQs on the GPU cards and all sorts of stuff. So because you can do that with CPUs so easily and so quickly, it's really built for more complex scenarios where they're longer, you know, harder to get passwords. And using a GPU, you can do so many more combinations per second. So if somebody has a password standard for their organization, it almost makes it easier for Hashcat. Absolutely. It, well, depending on what that standard is. And so that's the problem is a lot of security professionals will say create a password with the first letter uppercase with four digits on the end or something. And if, if that is the type of policy, that's a big problem. One place I worked, they actually told us not to guide people when they're creating passwords is do this. But we pretty much have to because our, our rules look so complex that... If we didn't tell them, they'd keep trying stuff, even though we, they, it was again, it wasn't in the policy rules, and they would keep screwing it up and all right, try to pass it. For me, the best policy for that is to literally, I mean, the only way to combat this is random generated passwords that are a specific length and a specific character set. You know, I mean, and when I say specific character sets, I really mean every character available. So it's. Uh, getting that that's a really big problem in corporations is uh, you know because you could have the most complex password schema in the world and 50% of the people that work at a normal corporation are going to like tape it to the other side of their keyboard and so yeah exactly and so that's the pro the problem is keeping it up changing it you know all this stuff because it's really just an odds game if you have everybody change their password every six months it minimizes you know Get one getting it increases points. the number of people who actually write it down and put it on the uh, screen. But the truth <laughs> of the matter is every corporation in the world has many flaws, and if somebody spends enough time, they're finding it, and anybody can get hacked at any time, basically, is my personal opinion, unless if it's plugged into the Internet. Exploit the temporary. Uh, bad design yeah, speed goes forever. I'm just gonna, we cover most everything, but I'm just going to finish the slides real quick. Let's see. So I'm just going to go through them real quick. So that was our brute force example. And like I said, I'll put these up somewhere so you can see them. So we did the brute force. This is the example of that hybrid attack like he did with the dictionary file on the left and uh, two lowercase digits on the right. Or that's two of every single uh, possible thing on the right. But those can be made numbers or whatever. Um, anyway... And then this is all about the fingerprinting attack, which we all talked about. Um, like I said, I'll put this up on question defense so anybody can reread it, but Alex explained the attack really well. 
Um, there's a few tips and tricks that Adam gave us. Um, the fingerprinting tags designed to work with GPUs. Um, if you're using CPUs, you just want to make rules. Um, you can use your own word list. You don't necessarily have to extract the word list from the, 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 the example that we did. We brute forced the word list and then started out with that word list so that we could look at patterns that that word list had. But you could also just as easily use your own word lists and see what you could get. Um, uh, also, like I said earlier, you got to be really careful not to use huge word lists with the expander. It will get out of hand really quick. Um, you can build your own pattern dictionary really easily. And then another thing to do is to limit the length of the patterns. Um, there's a I did not put it on here, but there's a variable that you can change. Um, it'll be on the notes that go with this. There's a variable that you can change in the expander um, so that you can limit the length of the passwords that come out of it. Um, so if your pattern dictionary, for example, had 8, 9, and 10 character passwords, you wouldn't want the expander to come out with 20 and 25 character passwords. Um, these are my two absolute favorite places to get word lists. The first one is Ron's site, Skull Security. I think uh, Adrienne already talked about that. Go Ron. But um, this site, I'll see if I still have internet. Yeah, he also does a lot of stuff with uh, NMAP scripting engine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he does all the SMB scripts. Is that what it is? Oh. Let me show you this. This guy has the biggest. Uh, this guy has the biggest compilation of wordless links on the on the web so far. Um, this guy's name is MK4. He was actually on our Hashcat team. Uh, oh, here downloads wordless. So this guy has, as you can see, has just about every word list on the internet listed here. And so these are all places you could get word lists. There's a site. Yeah, that's an MK40 site. This is blog. Anyway, so um, this guy's blog is really cool, Hashcracking. Um, he's uh, one of the guys that hangs out and works with Hashcat. Um, but in any case, if you want word lists, this is the way to go. And he has Skull Security and all that stuff listed on there. and. Uh, Here's Skull Security Ron's site in case anyone wants to see it. Hmm? Oh, that's one. Well, this is just the thing, but anyway, the so. The Rocky one's the hottest one. Right yeah, now. the Rocky one's the hottest one, wherever that is, but anyway, there's like the configure password list, which is somebody intercepted the configure worm one time and dumped all the passwords that it, that it had collected while it was out worming around. And <laughs> <Worming> so. Around. <laughs> <laughs> so those are. Uh, so those are all awesome. <laughs> real life. Well, sounds like a bad friend. Or a good friend, depending on your point. So uh, here's the list from Hack5 when they got hacked. Um, so in any case, uh, Ron's site is really good with um, uh, real life passwords. He's pretty quick to put them up there. Oh, no. um, uh, anyway, <laughs> so there's that. And then... So this is my shameless self-promotion. This password crap sucks. I hate doing it. Um, you can let us do the work for you. So we have an online password cracking service at tools.questiondefense.com. We support these algorithms. So far, um, WPA is pretty much our biggest um, since it's the slowest and nobody wants to crack WPA and um, nobody can do it as fast as we can. Um, we can return, Literally you know, nobody. three hours. Literally nobody can do 980 million words in three hours. I don't know if anybody's used to WPA cracking, but on a on a you know high end gaming desktop, you might get 3,000 hashes per second. So um, we're uh, about 50 times faster than that, or maybe 100 times. Anyway, who was that website you were just at? They had the Hotmail and all the others up there. Skull Security. Uh, Skull. Oh, wiki down the page, but I didn't see it. Oh, uh, I may have hot linked right to his thing. And, Anyway, it's uh, if you go to uh, Skull Security, uh -huh. Wiki, Passwords. Here, let me see if I can get it from the main page so you can see it. Or Google search well, Skull yeah, Security Passwords. Page. You're on which page? I was on the page you were just on. I just didn't need Oh, uh, well. Like a white text, a white background. Yeah, he has them individually listed here. Um, 
so you can just download them one at a time. Oh, I guess I'm running out of batteries. So I guess the talk's over when you're running out of batteries. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, can you go through from uh, where you have the password file? Right. Right. So what is that program in C++? Just C. Just C? It's not C++? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it's just plain old C. Hey, is there any doing practice hash list for you to get a copy? Hashkiller. Yeah, if you go to hashkiller.com, there's a tab that says open crack, maybe. And uh, then there's an area over on the right where you can download that every day they post about 400 or maybe 40,000, I don't know. But anyway, they post a whole lot of MD5 hashes every day. And what happens is people submit the hashes, and then it looks in their database, and if it can't find them, it adds them to a queue, and then every day you can download it. And then it's kind of a competition. People try to crack as many as they can and upload them as fast as possible, and then it will, you know, it, if you're registered, it will give you a score next to your name. But it's fun to practice. Guys, I appreciate you all coming, and I think you all, you said you all are going to end now? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it, and thanks for showing up, and you did a great job. Make sure that you all my whole hand is in when I put it down, to get a question fence down on the uh, Okay. On logo. Sure. And our uh, next speaker has to go to the restroom, so uh, everybody meet back here in about five minutes. Does that sound good? Yeah.